Thank you everybody for being here. And if you're not from Eastern, welcome to Eastern. Uh, before we get started, I would like to give credit to Mer Meredith McDermott, who is a school psychologist uh, practicing at uh, Orange Community Unit School District. And uh, she's a graduate of uh, the, our school psychology program here. And um, also, um, I teach in the school psychology uh, program. Uh, before we go on, I wanted to tell you about two things. Um, the first one is that this is not about to walk you through steps how uh, to prevent a depression or a cyberbullying. It is to give you some background about the relationship between cyberbullying and depression because research informs practice and this is the research component. Um, I know sometimes people are in a conference for different reasons. I just wanted to make sure uh, that you understand that. Uh, the second thing is that uh, the handout is in your booklet. So there are some slides that are just verbatim uh, and that is for your information and I will now go uh, over th those uh, slides in detail so that we have some uh, time at the end for question and answers. So, given that, um, here we are. Uh, and also before I get uh, to that, let me give you a background as to how we arrived at this study. A couple of years ago, we did a study um, looking at the relationship between, uh, well, no, predictors of uh, depression in adolescence. That's all we wanted to know. What are some of the variables that predict depression in adolescents? And to our surprise, cyberbullying happened to emerge to the top of the list. It happened to be the third predictor, a variable predictor. And the next question was, why is that? Uh, there are some studies that indicate that, but we need more, let's look at it, is that so? Uh, so that's how we came uh, um, to do this uh, research. So the purpose of the study uh, was, first of all, is it a relationship? Uh, if there is a relationship, what do adolescents themselves think should be done? Um, and then that will also inform us about which direction we're going uh, to take. So simply defined, um, cyberbullying is that willful, deliberate uh, harassment, that repeated harassment that uh, is passed from one person through uh, the media. And by the way, Patchen is your keynote speaker, if you had uh, gone uh, to uh, uh, his uh, um, presentation this morning. And some of the work here really depends on his work too. We used his scale as well. Um, why study cyberbullying? Uh, we know that um, a lot of people have recognized it's detrimental to children. Even the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics says that the most common online risk for all teens is cyberbullying. Uh, we also know that it has a high prevalence rate from 14% to about 49%. And you wonder why such variation. And it depends on the sample you have, the area. Some areas have higher incidence than others, so that, that explains that. But even 14% is a little high. Uh, so we need to look uh, into that. It's also in the news, one of the most uh, sad event that we have seen lately is that Hope, of Witzel, uh, Hope Witzel, who unfortunately sent a <laughs> picture of herself to her boyfriend who was tormented to death. Uh, that is referred now to as um, bully side instead of suicide, it's called uh, bully side. And lawmakers have also gotten into it. Every single state now has some sort of law that um, tries to deal with bullying uh, period. There are about five states left that do not have those laws and they seem to have uh, to be in um, uh, the southern uh, type of the, uh, the part of the country. And we also have seen because of those laws that we're beginning to see persecution of people who do perpetrate. Um, and then another desperate 
um, attempt by schools is that some schools are hiring companies to watch and monitor the activities of their students online. That is a more expensive, of, uh, expensive way of doing things because it doesn't teach our children much. Uh, what we need to do is enable them to uh, be able not um, uh, to deal with that. Um, so some statistics to throw out to give you uh, some background uh, from the uh, National Center for Education uh, Statistics from 2009. Um, it seems like the prevalence rate we looked at um, earlier, it really might even be, uh, be higher than 14%. And it's higher at a younger age, but it gets better as they get older, uh, luckily. Uh, but still at 20% uh, at the 12th grade uh, level, that is still high. Um, what do you think Illinois would be? when you look at states? What, what would you guess? Anybody just throw out a number, number 30 in the states, number one, number? Uh, huh? Five percent. Five, uh, top five percent? Five, five, five to five percent. You're right, top 25%. We are really competitors. We're pretty good, aren't we? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, when you look at the population, California and New York, and here we are number three, that is pretty high. Uh, so the, uh, we have the issues uh, that we have to um, address. Um, this is verbatim in, in your um, handout, um, and the only reason I'm putting it up here is so that you can appreciate that cyberbullying happens in so many different ways, and it's hard to detect, de detect sometimes. And girls seem to um, focus on some of this than boys, uh, so it's a little tricky to say which one is which one. Uh, so, but it comes in many, many different ways. Uh, so this is uh, verbatim in your uh, handout. When we look at traditional um, bullying, is it really different from cyberbullying? And if you look at the definition, it's really not any different. One is face-to-face, -face, the other one is uh, uh, through the media. And, but in both cases, is that repeated over time uh, harassment of um, others and that is uh, deliberate. And it's about 15%. It has been stabilized for uh, quite, quite a while now. Is there a relationship between um, traditional bullying and um, depression? And the research does suggest that there is a relationship. So it may not be that surprising that there is a relationship between cyberbullying and um, depression, given that the tra it has been established that the traditional bu uh, bullying does seem to be related to depression. So very quickly, as you know, when you do research, you have to depend on the current research. And that's what guides uh, what you want to do. So what this slide is doing is just give you a little sample of the research we looked at that supports um, our um, research. Wang Nessel and um, Ayantoni did a large study uh, so over 7,000 uh, 7, uh, students, and they looked at all the types of uh, uh, bullying and uh, depression. And what they found out was, yes, yes, there is a relationship between bullying and um, depression. And the victims, if, if there is a high victimization, uh, there is going to be more depression than, uh, those, uh, than the bullies. Now, there is a theory that suggests that any involvement, whether you're a bully or victim or bully victim, bullies can be victims themselves, uh, that there is a level of depression involved. But in their study, it seems like victims uh, have uh, a higher level of uh, depression. And then Lee did another study that sort of looked at the attitude of uh, uh, children. And uh, obviously about 42% uh, of them did nothing uh, when they saw uh, um, abuse going on. And 70% said they watched it, but did not participate. So it's almost that, that bystander type of um, effect. And um, 
when you look at the last um, percentages, when you look at, at them separately, they look like, okay, 46% did nothing, um, but 35% says it, it, what happens online stays online. But when you put them together, that's a high percentage of students who have decided to do nothing about it. Uh, they don't even think, it's almost helpless situation, they don't even think uh, that uh, it should be reported. So that is a concern. Um, another thing that uh, the literature also suggests is that if parents are involved in children's lives, in addition to the children themselves having some affiliation and connection to the schools, they go to, then the cyberbullying um, uh, may not may not affect them that much. So what they lo what I found out was if there is low parental involvement, the depression is going to be higher, and if they have a sense of belonging to the schools, the depression is going to be lower. So that's what they, they, they found out. So our research, this is just a sample, our research is based on this um, understanding. Am I going too fast? When I get excited, I go too fast. I normally tell our students to go like this, so like a little break. <laughs> All right. So what is the effect of bullying? Uh, of course, you're not going to see um, black eye or a kid crying or whatever, but it, there's no physical injury that you see, but it does hurt. Um, and what is tricky about cyberbullying is that it mimics other things. So it's very difficult to say this is what it is. Look at this uh, symptoms. Well, appearing sad, avoiding school, withdrawing from uh, uh, social activities, experiencing a uh, drop uh, in, in grades. Well, you can be uh, depressed, period without uh, being bullied. It could be anxiety, it could be family stress, who knows? It's very difficult to figure out. And then the next two are if you see a, ki a child being upset after using computer or after checking text, well, how many of us do follow children around to see what their reactions are? It's just very difficult to, to detect. That is really the message here. Um, all right, so as psychologists, well, in, any researcher, you just don't get up and do research. Something has to explain why there is a relationship between, maybe a relationship between depression, uh, cyberbullying and depression. And um, one of the theories that uh, tries to explain is that when you and I, and I hope you all have experienced some bullying along the line, I didn't know it was bullying until I was an adult. Um, I was uh, telling the uh, uh, keynote speaker this uh, morning that I really did not know. I was an adult when I figured out, oh, that's what is called bullying, because there was this really, really, really older guy, and I was little, like third grade. I'm still little, I know that, but <laughs> little, young, and he would come and he would say, don't look at me, and you turn, you know, you close, you, I mean, you gotta go somewhere, you have to see, you open your eye, he would follow us and say, a group of us, don't look at me. Well, yeah, that is bullying, I, I just didn't know that, but so some Somehow we have experienced that. But you know what? When we went home, that stopped. So we had respite. These kids do not have respite. <coughs> they can be reached anytime, anywhere. That's what makes it very, very difficult for them to deal with. Um, so w one, you know, I'm sure you have run into this um, in your own uh, studies, ecological system approach explains that. And what it's, say, it's saying to us is that instead of having those boundaries, it just permeates everywhere, e e anywhere. Um, and you know, the microsystem, um, uh, mesosystem, exosystem, and macro uh, 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 macrosystem, you have the immediate family. That's all you have at the beginning. That's where the child is. And then the next system, so the, whatever the family provides, that environment the, the family pro provides, is going to affect the child positively or negatively. And then the next thing the child moves into, that he, 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 she is affected by, are the interaction between the home 
and other events, for example, the school, um, any worship place, you know, whatever it is that people are uh, engaged in. And the third system is the larger community. What happens in the community? What are the policies? What are the governance uh, um, experience we have that affect the family and that indirectly would affect the child? And the last one is at the society level. What we have, the laws that govern our country, the policies, the tax system, whatever, those things affect the family directly, that indirectly would affect the child. So that is how the ecological system ex uh, describes the child's uh, development. So in this case, what they, he, they are saying to us is that within the system, the, these children now, the, the social network we have adapted, the technology we have adapted, and all the other systems are sort of overlapping. They don't get any break. So it's easy to say the following. Well, they can turn it off. Why do they go looking for it if they are being uh, harassed? Well, how can they do that when society has totally has adapted technology to be a form of communication. That is a form of communication they have. And then when you look at them developmentally, what is their need at, their, at that age? Any teachers? What do teenagers want? Exactly, approval from their peers. They want to be accepted, they want to be with them. That's where they want to go. And there's another theory that explains that. If you remember, Eric Erickson did develop the developmental um, tasks that every one of us go through from infancy to uh, old age. So that's what they want. They want to be a, a, a accepted. So yes, they are going to check. As a matter of fact, they are the ones who are going to check more often so that they know what is going on, so that they can fight it if they can. So it is a very difficult task they have. Um, the next one is just the uh, graphic. Um, explanation of that. The original was uh, done with solid uh, lines and now because of this permeation it's uh, a little open. Okay, so what do we want to do? Now we understand this. Uh, we asked three questions and uh, four questions actually and three hypotheses. Um, the first one is the relationship between cyberbullying and depression. And uh, if there is, um, who is going to be more likely uh, depressed? Uh, and then um, the second one, do victims, bullies, and bully victims differ in severity of self-report? Uh, and uh, the last one is, does really parent involvement and in school connect con connect do those two <laughs> uh, make really uh, a difference? You know, do they buffer uh, uh, depression? And then the last one, what do students want? What, what do they think we, we should do? All right, so given this, this is the boring part of research and the exciting part for us. Uh, so the method part of us, you know, we, we have to put it out there. 127 uh, children from northern uh, Chicago area and more girls. Uh, as you know, most schools have more girls even at the college level. So it is what it is. Um, but what we have is we have more of the uh, earlier grades, the ninth grade, than we did the 12th grade. So that comparison um, could not be done. Uh, predominantly uh, Caucasian, not much uh, diversity at all. Um, we used um, instruments of online behavior, this was all online, a uh, questionnaire uh, that was uh, put from Patchen's uh, work um, and also um, Wang and Nassel and Yanti. And though that was for the depression scale because you have to have a scale to measure whether they really have a depression or not. And we, the, this scale by itself has the DSM. The DSM is a diagnos the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, which is the Bible for mental health uh, diagnosis, uh, the, the Bible, whatever else, um, other books uh, that we uh, love. Uh, 
So then finally, we asked two questions. What do you think should be done to stop cyberbullying and how cyberbullying reported? Um, so, and then demographic information, you know, do you have a computer? Do you have access to internet? Uh, how many hours do you spend? All those types of uh, questions so that we have some sense of their technology uh, use. Um, Obviously, we can't do anything without having the institutional board, the uh, human subject board approve uh, something. And then when uh, you're working with children, you have to have the parental consent and of course the student assent given uh, their age uh, level. Um, and then we got them before they started their PE class so that there is uniformity as to how we administered the uh, scale. Um, Design and data analysis, this is a correlational study, so we cannot uh, uh, claim causation. We don't know what caused what. Uh, these children who are depressed, when they seem to be depressed because of uh, uh, cyberbullying, maybe they have a tendency to be depressed to begin with. So we don't know. So all we know is a relationship, not uh, causality here. Um, and then um, uh, we, did frequency and multiple regression to look at mediating factors, for example, the uh, parental involvement in uh, school belonging. Uh, all right, so what did we find out? This is a fun part. Uh, what we found out was, first of all, this sample was totally wired. There's no doubt about that. So 100% they had a computer at home. 96% uh, 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 had internet, and which surprised us. 65% uh, said only they spend one to two hours uh, online. I don't believe that. There's something wrong with that picture. Uh, so uh, it's the average. Obviously, you have the extremes. Uh, so at least it gives us some idea. And 96% um, uh, owned uh, cell phones, and as many used them. Uh, for uh, texting. So it is a uh, pretty high use of uh, technology and this is not any different uh, from any other group I don't think. Um, so they are wired and we also found out that cyber, cyber bully was really prevalent among this group. 47% um, uh, had posted something online about some, somebody else and 39% had uh, text those uh, messages. But at the same time, 70% had received upsetting te text for themselves, and 48% had posted on Facebook. So it's similar, consistent to what other um, studies have found, that uh, the, there is variability, but it just seems like it's 30% or above is going to be a fair um, assumption of uh, what is happening out there. Hypothesis one was supported. Uh, there's just no doubt that there was a significant relationship between cyber pulling and depression. And that 18% of the variance accounts for that. Uh, so which is uh, pretty strong um, support. Girls seem to be more uh, bullied uh, than boys. Um, I'm sure there are, we could spend uh, the rest of the day talking about why that might be, uh, but that's just uh, the way it is. And we had, we did not, we grouped together the uh, ages instead of doing 9, 10, 11, 12 because the numbers went down as the grace went up. We lumped together the uh, last two years and compared them to uh, the ninth grade and we didn't see any difference be, uh, between those two uh, groups. So hypothesis two was supported too. There was a strong relationship between victimization uh, and depression. So those, even though the uh, current research shows that any involvement um, in uh, cyberbully, whether it's being bullied or uh, uh, being victim, um, exposes you to depression. In this study, at least, that the largest relationship was between victimization and depression, and the variance was very, very strong. It was thirty percent. 
So that's a pr pretty strong uh, indicator of uh, uh, that relationship. Uh, so hypothesis one and two were supported. So what about hypothesis three? Are we good on time? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, hypothesis three. Well, it was partially supported. And the reason is, you know, parents can be involved with their children. They can drive them all over. They can bring the, the cupcakes and all that to school. That is involvement. But if they don't monitor, it doesn't seem to make a difference. So it is when parents monitor what their children are actually doing, especially online, that it makes a difference. So parent monitoring and the relationship with, good relationship with teachers, they seem to make a difference. Uh, so that's something that we need uh, to think about um, as well. So that was partially uh, uh, supported. And then we looked at traditional bullying. I really felt sorry uh, for the 36% because they got it both ways. Uh, they got it online, they got it in person. One of the, the suspicions about uh, cyberbullying is that you, we tend to say electronically what we don't say to people in person. But in this case, they are telling us over 50%, if I'm mean online, I'm going to be mean in person. Um, but I do feel bad for the 36%. Um, then, you know, they say that, and then they come down. Um, 36% would not say anything to anybody. Um, okay, so how the, the reported, how, how is a cyber polling reported? 40% 40, 40 told an adult. This is a very intriguing uh, finding. 34 says they said they, they did it to report it to the website. Then look at the next one. 77% never reported anything mean. And 68% never reported mean postings about others. What this suggests is that there must be categorization of what cyberbullying is, what is serious and what is not serious. So there are some things they, they think is serious enough to report, but just being mean to, uh, to somebody is not something that rises to the level of uh, uh, reporting. So uh, something that future research will have to look at. Um, so we'll see. Um, what should be done to cyberbullying? Um, about cyberbullying, 22% said educate students and increase awareness. Uh, we're almost done, so just hang, hang in the hair. It gets interesting uh, once this is over. Um, and then 21% uh, said increase online monitoring, 17% punish bullies and reinforce harsh uh, uh, consequences. So we're looking at this, those three statements. So what do we do with that? So we went back to the literature to see what does the literature say about the suggestions. You know, are they just off somewhere, or do these things really make a difference? So the next um, slide actually deals uh, with that. Uh, so when we looked at it, when we went to uh, the uh, literature, it was obvious they were right on the mark. Those are the three ideas that research actually supports. So the first one is educating. Now, it's not only the, the students, however. You have to educate everybody that works at school, from the bus driver to the teacher to your, uh, your uh, um, principal. Uh, you have to educate the parents, you have to involve the parents, and you have to educate the children themselves. So that awareness education is really, really important. However, we cannot do it the way, well, we, we're, we're, we have come a long way how, as to how to deal with bullying. Um, once upon a time, it was just like once a semester, bully awareness week or something like that, but we never targeted anything for long term. But we are changing that, so it's changing. So what we need to do is really educate uh, people who are involved in the children's life 
over a period of time, uh, not just once uh, in a while. Um, increased mo monitoring in uh, online activities. That is also uh, called on by uh, the research. So again, that uh, requires a whole school approach uh, to uh, address uh, a bullying. Um, and I assume some of you work in the school system. Now, do you know, do you have policy about bullying in your schools? Do you? And do you know how well it is followed and it is implemented? Well, probably it is or it is not, I don't know, uh, but from I, uh, like I said, I'm a school psychologist and I go in and out of the schools as a, a practicum supervisor and intern supervisor all the way uh, from south all the way to uh, north. And what I see is a, a inconsistency. Until we have consistent implementation of what it, what the policy is, it is not going to make a difference. It's almost like when you're raising little children, if you say yes one day to something, to a candy before dinner, and you say no uh, uh, the next day, which one are they supposed to believe? If you're not, if you're not consistent, it's not going to uh, uh, take effect. And it's the same thing uh, here. And then what does the, how does the curriculum handle this? Is there any way it could be part of the curriculum, either about writing, about discussions, you know, whatever it is, so that these children can uh, be um, educated? Um, and then how are we helping parents to monitor their children? We are dependent on our children. Most of you are so much younger, probably you are not dependent on others uh, for technology. I'm dependent for technology on my children. If there is a generation gap about technology. So parents, most parents are not going to know how to monitor their children's activities online because their children are the ones who help them through the computer. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm the only one in, 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 in that. Um, uh, I, I know that. So they really need um, education. And I'm not saying that the schools have the responsibility to teach computer skills. That is not the, the, the deal. What they have is to help parents how to talk to the children so that they know what is not good for them to do and how to protect themselves. That is where really where the education comes when it's come uh, to school. And then enabling reporting. Uh, there is a suggestion that even anonymous reporting uh, might be a good thing to do, but that also has its own problems because if I'm mad at somebody, I can call the school and say so and so is uh, harassing me and I don't have to tell my name and somebody gets in trouble. So there has to be a different way of uh, uh, solving this problem as well, but that's what the literature s suggests. And then consequence bullying. We know that, you know, we talked about the consistency. We know that younger children seem to respond better to loss of privileges. So if you cannot go outside uh, for recess, for doing, uh, having done that, that means so much more important to a second grader than it is to a middle schooler. It just doesn't work. So what works a little more with uh, the older children is a restitution, having a conversation, giving a rationale how their behavior impacts others and find a way how they make, they make up to that person they are uh, harassing. It doesn't even have to be the directly uh, to another person, but they can even do community service within the school for having engaged in whatever they uh, engaged in. But these things require commitment, require uh, time, and the, the um, challenge for schools and for teachers is that at uh, this high stakes uh, time where they have uh, they have to prepare students for the big thing at the end of the year and their livelihood is affected by how well the children perform to ask them to do this in addition to that is quite a challenge so schools will have to come up with a different way of doing this um, so then okay 
um, we have we ha we have a sense that there is a relationship between cyberbullying and depression. These children have told us that educate us, monitor us, and give us some cons consequences for engaging in this behavior. We looked at the literature, and the literature is saying yes, they are right. These are the things that you, we need to do. So then uh, we said, okay. So if that is the case, there are all this anti-bullying, this anti-bullying, that programs. Look at the table downstairs. All those books with the bully stuff. Well, how do we know which one is good, which one is effective, which one has uh, um, evidence behind it? So we go. We went back to the literature again, one more time. This is the last, uh, the last um, uh, slide. Stay with me so that we can have conversation. So we went back to the literature, and we arrived at this huge um, risk meta-analysis that was done by um, Farrington and Toffee, and that was funded by the U.S. Fer the federal government. And what this group did was not only they looked at all the different programs that, is, that are available right here within this country, uh, they went to Canada, Italy, England, um, Ireland, most of the Scandinavian countries, and Australia. And they had criteria as to how they were going to evaluate these programs, and they did. And this is the conclusion they, they reached. None of the programs that you can buy out there or you can learn about uh, uh, out there are all evidence-based. And instead, what they did was eventually, they took a small part of the evidence-based activities from each program and came up with a model of what they thought should be helpful for schools, and that is the last uh, slide for this part of it. The first thing is you need to have needs assessment. You have to figure out what is going on in your own school. You know what is the level of uh, um, bullying in your uh, school. You know, do you really need something like this? Because if you don't need it, there is no reason to uh, to, to go there. Uh, so. We need to do uh, needs assessment. And patients work uh, by itself. It really is a good skill. Cyberbullying and online aggression survey is free, it's out there. Schools can download that and administer it to the, to the students uh, to figure out what. And it, the, the, the students don't have to put their names down. So they, they can do this without. Uh, and then the, the other one is student school survey by William and uh, Guerrera. So, and there are uh, others like this, but these are the two that seem to be uh, very useful to schools. And then we have already talked about some of these things uh, that uh, about the telling environment and educating teachers. And what Fake um, Peppers and Vera Law uh, Van Rock found out was that, first of all, bully children don't tell others that they are bullied. And then teachers and parents never ever talk. And that's the word, they, the, the expression they word I, I, they used, and I, uh, I shortened this. They do not confront bullies. There is some level of thinking, you know, it is what the children do to each other. Uh, so maybe it's uh, something that would pass, but that's not the case anymore. Um, and intervention for both bullies and victims. Both groups lack social skills. We know that victims are usually on the side of being a little shy uh, or n being non-assertive, while the bullies are the opposite side and they do not know how to problem solve. So if they have an issue, it's either hitting or uh, verbal aggression, whether it is online uh, or not. So they need to be targeted, period. Uh, that's uh, the, the message. So what is the quality of the program that you, you are looking um, at? It has to be intense and long term. It's not a one day, a one week thing. It has to go on. 
uh, because you get new students anyway, so uh, you'll have to keep it up. Is it age appropriate? What you do with the fourth grader is going to be so different with um, uh, 11th grader. Uh, how is it implemented? Even a very good um, program, if it is not implemented the way it's designed, it's not going to work. So that fidelity is really, really important. And there are tons of stuff uh, uh, out there to help you check fidelity uh, as well. And then is, you, is what you're doing working? That's why that needs assessment comes in, because you're going to know, for example, the number of complaints you have. So by the time you get to, after implementing, you're going to progress monitor, are you making a difference? If you're not making a difference, there is no reason to continue this. So these are some of the qualities that um, have been suggested uh, that schools look into before going into some sort of uh, programming uh, that they uh, want to do. Um, then the last part of this is a new um, approach and probably there is a lot of uh, research in sociology area uh, on this subject and it's just becoming to um, for use for um, bullying is what is known as defiance theory and restor restorative justice. What is that is that uh, for defiance theory, some of these children who engage in cyberbullying, there's indifference about them, about what they do to others, and a failure to understand the impact of their behavior. So using that theory that they need to be brought in to learn how their behavior impacts others. And then that question, why are they indifferent? Uh, is it because they don't actually belong to the school community? And what could be done to make them feel they belong to the school community? So it needs to be addressed at that level. Restor restorative justice refers to the idea not only just working with the victim and not working just with the bully, at one point, bringing those together for problem solving. It's almost like mediation. We, the, more, uh, the way we know it is mediation. So that is really the new, uh, the new direction that uh, bullying intervention is uh, going uh, to. So um, having said that, uh, obviously there has to be some problem with any study. So let's just talk about what uh, we need to do in the future. Uh, first of all, self-report is always suspect bias. So we have to correct for that and use some direct measure. Um, and of course, correlational study, I have talked about that uh, we cannot ascertain uh, causation. So something in the future that needs to be done. But one area that we need to focus quite more is really testing for the effectiveness of intervention that we purport work and we try to sell out there. So with that, I'm going to stop and see if you have questions, comments, questions, your experience. After lunch is tough, <laughs> I realize that. Any comments, any questions? Go ahead. Questions are on the, um, the survey you gave out to the kids. Uh -huh. What are you asking them? What did we ask them? Yeah. Oh boy. Um, see, what did we ask them? Uh, well, all the demographic information as far as technology use uh, is concerned. Um, and then we listed, I'm just giving from top of uh, my um, head. Uh, we listed all the different uh, bullying that could ever uh, occur, and we asked them how often they would have experienced that. And then we tried to guide them, because when you leave it open like that, you know, how often it's hard for people to think about. So we gave them, for example, zero to three, four to five, uh, six to ten times a week, or something like that. Uh, so for all the bullies. And then for the depression, it actually listed the DSM-4 criteria for depression and asked them um, uh, about that. 
we ask them about parents, you know, how many of their parents have talked to them, how often their parents know when they are online, do they know who they are talking to, uh, all those types of questions. If you are interested, uh, you can give me your name, I can actually mail you the, uh, I mean, um, send it as an attachment, the, the uh, questionnaire itself. But like I said, we use Patchen and um, Swanson, whatever his name was, I forget now. You, you, we put those two to, 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 together. Uh, so I can send that to you, okay? And what was the uh, SES level of all the students that you? Well, good question. Uh, very well to do. That's why they, they were wired. Uh, because depending which part of the state you go, not everybody is wired. They might have the computer, but not, not necessarily access to the internet. So this is a well-to-do, affluent uh, community in northern Chicago, the, the suburb of the north side, uh, side of the suburb of Chicago. Uh, so you might find something a little different if you had socioeconomic diversity, for example. There are some children the only way they can have access is uh, to internet is when they are in school or they go to the uh, public library. Yeah, good question. Anything else? All right. Before your next one, you have, uh, or oh, is this the end? Is this the end? Is it o'clock? We've got about five minutes. This clock is off a little bit. Okay, this is a little slow. Okay. Well, it has been wonderful to have you on campus. Come and see us. Thank you.